Lex, from from what was done twenty five years ago into where we are now, uh, are there are there aspects of the actual law itself that you would like to see updated, tweaked, you know, whatever the term you would like to use is? Well, actually, I think Leonard mentioned the uh, 2008 amendments to the Americans with Disabilities Act. That uh, particular set of amendments did the updating that was really needed, and uh, I think moving forward, uh, we can benefit from that. The law is a very good, clear piece of legislation, but frankly, so was the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Yeah. And yesterday, we uh, last year, we celebrated the 50th anniversary of that act, and there are still things to be done to remove disparities between uh, people of color and, and the, the other population. And the same thing can be said of um, uh, gender and, and uh, sexual preference and so on. We have uh, many disparities in this country that need to be cons- concerning public policy makers, uh, community officials, and others, so that we can get to a balance where everybody can contribute. I mean, that's the key, I think, is to give people who who want to be a f- part of the mainstream and to contribute to the collective benefits of our society, you want to give them the opportunity to do that. Removing barriers for people with disabilities is clearly an important step in doing so. We need to continue to identify those barriers and to to get rid of them. If they're attitudinal, we can deal, you know, we have strategies to deal with that. We just need to employ those strategies more effectively. But as a a developing society, can we eliminate absolutely every one of those last barriers or you know it's a process where as as we develop and you know more now in the digital age the last you know 20 years or so there are certain aspects probably of everyday life because of the digital age that have changed quite a bit that probably you know are in the process of being updated with the with the ada as well right now absolutely that's true and You know, the other thing to consider about that are the improvements that we make in technology, the benefits that we have now, will accrue to the population of people with disabilities. Because of the new technologies, many people with disabilities who might not have been able to to work productively are able to use that technology to do productive work. Um, The employment uh, uh, framework is changing. Many companies employ people working at home in distant places. Universities now are changing their curricula so that people don't have to sit in the classroom. All of these kinds of of changes that could be barriers to people with disabilities actually need to be used as uh, the the, the way to get around barriers. So we, as we develop, we need to be considerate of this population. At the same time, understand that if we develop properly, this will really help to eliminate barriers. And obviously, Adam, that's something that a lot of businesses really have to take a heart at, at uh, take too hard, I should say, uh, on a daily basis. That the, you know, if, if there are, in some respects, probably some companies don't think about it enough than than they probably should. I think that's definitely true. And we, you know, there's even been in the last few months, last year or so, you know. Uh, Uber has become a really big deal. There's a court sure, case yeah. about should Uber be, you know, like should they be more accommodating uh, of people with disabilities? And so, I mean, as the world changes, there, you know, these laws and regulations and how we think about them or how we think about, um, you know, customers, potential employees, they have to evolve too. Um, the interesting thing is, is, is what, as Lex mentioned, is some of the things that we're coming up with, some of these technologies can actually be enabling devices. They can yep. be things that allow people more access, different people access uh, than we've had. And if, you, if, if you're a business, you know, if you're a firm in these kinds of businesses, and you start thinking about these different populations, what you can probably come up with are ways to serve that population that actually benefit a broader population too. So in the process of coming up with some solution to a problem that maybe seems like it's going to be more directed towards uh, people with disabilities, then you realize, well, wait a minute, this is actually great for (laughs) older people. Or, oh, you know, wait, this is great for, mobile workers are great. Yeah. This is, you know, this is really good for 
you know, young children or whatever, that, you know, whatever that population is. And so it's it's sort of thinking more creatively about how solutions can be applied uh, to a broader set of a, a broader set of people than 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 maybe like the classic consumer sure. that we visualize in our minds. And, and Leonard, I, I think you were the one that mentioned about how the the the, the numbers of, of older adults that actually are qualify as disabled right now is growing. And this is something we talk about speaking about expanding it beyond just the the, the topic we're talking about. We're we're getting to a point where we're seeing more and more people from that baby boomer generation that are heading into retirement. More and more people that are are in that age demographic, so it becomes even more important to have this type of thought process really brought to the forefront. Absolutely. Um, I'm in that in that baby boomer generation, and uh, so many of my friends and colleagues are at the point where they're having hip replacements, knee replacements. It's just no one thinks of that in a weird way as a disability, and I think the important part is to think of uh, human life as containing great diversity, Mm -hmm. physical diversity, neurological diversity, emotional diversity. And so uh, while it's really important to to understand that there is disability, it's also important to understand that that's just part of what life is. And and I think from my my perspective, um, the more we can embrace that idea, the less it becomes, less those subtle forms of discrimination uh, will have a chance to thrive. 844-WHARTON, 844-942-7866 is the number to, to give us a call. Lex, I'll let you finish up by, by really just playing off of, of what we were just asking uh, of Leonard about how important this is going to be going forward in the next few years. Well, it's, it's definitely important. If, if you have a, a need for one of those disabled parking spaces in front of the grocery store or the restaurant or whatever, uh, you will find today that those spots are typically filled, whereas years ago there were always vacant spots. And that indicates to me that more and more people are uh, actually qualified to use those slots, there is a little abuse, but I think the the bigger factor are the number of people who are retiring, who are becoming mobility impaired, hearing impaired, yep. vision impaired, and who need those kinds of uh, accommodations. They're not expensive to make, but uh, we have to update all those standards according to this new population. The travel industry is already ahead of us in many respects. They see the future market. And I think that's the real challenge for business is to take a look at those markets, see how they can actually be on the forefront of encouraging those people to earn money um, and to spend money. And that will help us all. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us for this discussion. I greatly appreciate your time. Lex, Leonard, Adam, thanks for coming into the studio. Thank you all. Thank you. Great Thanks. to have you all here. Lex Frieden from the University of Texas Health Science Center, Leonard Davis from the University of Illinois, and Adam Cobb here from the Wharton School right here at the University of Pennsylvania.